How many times have you bought something that you thought would be absolutely perfect for you only to find out later that there was a much better option and it was cheaper? Me too. I feel your pain. So in today's video, I've made it my mission to find out if buying expensive FPV controllers is actually worth your money, the best control options at every budget that'll last you a lifetime, and why buying the most expensive option might not actually be the best. Now, before we can do any of that, I need you to understand the five golden fundamentals of an FPV controller. If a controller ticks all of these boxes, then you know it's a solid controller, and if it lacks any of them, then you know what to be cautious of if you do go to buy it. Golden fundamental one is usually one of those things that come along with spending more money. And make sure that when you pop the controller in your bag, it doesn't fall apart and that it will actually last you a long time. So, how is that achieved? Well, it's all to do with having a good build quality. That means the plastic isn't crap, the switches are solid, and the whole thing doesn't creak or crack when you hold it. Yeah, I've had way too many controllers do that to me. Okay, golden fundamental two. Some controllers are simply stuck a bit in the past and, well, they just refuse to move on to newer technology. Think of it like your granddad who doesn't want to use a smartphone because he's used to using the home phone and swears by the fact that it still works. So it's a very similar state to that of a controller gimbal choice. Some controllers are still coming out with potentiometer gimbals, which especially in more budget controllers, are known to wear out over time, have more jitter, and not have as smooth of a feeling when compared to newer technology. So, our second golden fundamental is that a controller should have Hall Effect gimbals, which are gimbals that use magnets instead of physically touching tracks, making them dust and moisture resistant, and for the most part, a higher quality flying experience. Alrighty, our third golden fundamental is all about tackling one very important problem that we have seen occur over the years. As time moves forward, so does our development of technology and software, meaning that buying a controller that is locked into a particular radio protocol may not be the smartest solution. Golden Fundamental 3 is having a modular protocol support system, which is usually in the form of a module bay. That'll allow you five years in the future when we get some revolutionary radio protocol with crazy range to just be able to purchase the module, pop it into your controller, and not have to worry about buying an entirely new setup. This next golden fundamental is possibly one of the most important factors to consider for yourself. In fact, I would go as far as saying that without this fundamental, there is probably no point in you purchasing the controller at all. As I'm certain you understand, the controller is the one point of contact as such that we have with our drones, meaning alongside our goggles, it's the one thing we actually have attached to our body. You may have guessed it by now, but that makes golden fundamental for all about being comfy and ergonomic. If it sucks to hold, what is even the point? Okay, and for our fifth golden fundamental, we have to consider all ranges of skill levels. That means beginners and pros alike, but not quite in the way that you're probably thinking. When starting off, a beginner needs something that is simple to use and can connect to their favorite simulator to practice with. Similarly, a pro needs something that is streamlined and efficient and also hooks up to their favorite sim. The one thing that tackles both of these head on for this golden fundamental is USB-C, but not just any type of USB-C one that specifically offers both charging and data transfer. That way it's a simple plug-in to charge up and an equally simple plug-in to go on a sim. Alrighty, so now that you understand the measurements that I'll be using to judge the controllers, let's introduce the handy or horrible chart. Controllers that have most of the golden fundamentals ticked off will go over here, whereas the controllers that don't, they'll be going over here. So let's start off with the cheapest and work our way all the way up to the most expensive. This first controller is the only one that I don't actually have with me in my hands today, and well, you'll see why shortly. This is the Beta FPV Light Radio 2 SE, and it comes in at a very compelling $45. Now, let's pull up the five golden fundamentals, starting off with good build quality. Surprisingly, this is actually a really well-built controller that feels amazingly solid and definitely feels above its price range, so it actually checks this one really easily. Unfortunately, however, this is where it all mostly stops being positive. It doesn't have Hall Effect gimbals, there is no modular protocol support, and for me, being a pincher, it's not at all comfy to use. Its only redeeming factor is that it does have USB-C and allows you to charge and connect to the SIM, but yeah, not looking so good for this little guy. To make matters even worse, this is actually one of the controllers that I personally owned when starting off, and I actually had the gimbals fail on me not just once, but twice in a matter of hours. To be clear, I had the non-SE version, but as far as I know, everything has remained the same with the gimbals in the new version, so this controller is going straight to the horrible side. 
Alrighty, next is this little guy, the Radio Master Pocket, coming in at $65. Now, I've also added these little stick extensions on, plus the required two 18650 batteries, totaling us up to $83. So, what do you actually get for that? Well, starting off, the build quality is pretty good. It's nothing to go crazy about, and it does feel a little bit cheap in the hands. But once you turn it on and see the LEDs inside and feel the vibration motor working, it doesn't seem too bad. Next, the gimbals. Although they are certainly quite small, they're still Hall Effect, and by adding on these $3 extensions, I was surprised to see that they feel a lot more comparable to that of larger gimbals than I originally thought they would. They also tick off Fundamentals 3 and 5 easily, offering a mini module bay on the back and separate ports for charging and SIM use. That leaves us with Fundamental 4 though. Just how comfy is this? Now, I've tried plenty of small controllers in the past and have honestly never really enjoyed holding on to them. The Radio Master Pocket is actually the first exception that I've found. This is remarkably ergonomic for me as a pincher, as I can actually rest it against my stomach or even just hold on to it thanks to its size and weight. It's definitely not my all-time favorite, but it does take the crown for compact radios. With that being said, I'm happy to introduce our first guest to the handy side. All right, coming in as lucky number three, we've got another Radio Master controller. This is the Boxer. This one does jump our price up to $140, which means we're now talking around twice as much as the last one, so can it offer twice as much more? Well, straight off the bat, as you've probably noticed, this particular Boxer has got some upgraded gimbals. But we are putting those aside right now and basing everything off of the stock gimbals, which I've got on another controller. When compared to the last two, this controller really does take it to another level with build quality. Everything feels super tight, solid, and just well built. Then, regardless of if you have the upgraded AGO-1 gimbals like these, both the stock plastic gimbals and these ones are Hall Effect full-sized gimbals, which I'm a massive fan of. Then, of course, if you flip it over, it casually just one-ups this younger brother with a sweet full-size module bay, which can come in handy if you ever need a larger and more power-hungry transmitter module. Now you might be thinking, that's great and all, but how does it actually feel in the hands? And well, if I'm being totally honest here, it feels really bloody good. Like, oh my god good. It strikes the perfect mix of size, not being too small that my hands feel like cramped, yet not so big that I can't just hold on to it without a neck strap. Finally, in what seems to be Radio Master fashion, we've got two separate USB-C ports, one for data transfer and one for charging. Again, it's not ideal as it really isn't that hard to combine the two, but at least they still have both. This one really does tick all of the boxes, no pun intended there, so it actually saves itself a solid spot on the handy side. We're only halfway through though, so how can it get better from here? Well, next up is the DJI Remote 2. This little guy pops our price right on up to $195, and based on our previous few controllers, has really got a lot to live up to. If you aren't entirely familiar with DJI at this stage, they usually have some of the best features and qualities, but always leave out a super important fundamental or two. So let's change it up a bit and just start from the bottom of our fundamental list. USB-C data and charge, check. Comfy ergonomics? Well, for the most part, I don't really love this game style controller, but for its form factor, check. Modular protocol support? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Being the usual apple of the drone hobby, everything is limited to that of DJI's ecosystem only. That means no support for anything other than the DJI transmission, and even then, limited capabilities as to what DJI drones it could actually work with. Hall sensor gimbals on the other hand though, Check, although for the price they do feel a little bit small. Then finally, build quality. Also, another check. This is one of the things that DJI excel at, and realistically, it might be one of the smoothest yet high quality controllers we've seen yet. Thanks to the major limitations of protocols with this radio though, it makes it a super tough sell at this price, so I'm gonna have to put it right in the middle of handy and horrible. For just $5 more though, you can get your hands on this bad boy, which has been my go-to daily driver for the past three years. In saying that though, the Radio Master TX16S, which comes in at $200, would not actually be my choice if I was starting out again. More on that later in the video though. In terms of hitting the fundamentals, it checks number one, number two, number three, and number five. Where it does lack, however, is in its ergonomics. For some, the sheer amount of buttons and dials and switches it's a little bit overwhelming. They're a must for some people. And if that is the case for you, then unfortunately you're gonna need a beefier and bulkier controller, which is exactly what the TX16S is. I don't feel like I can use it without at least sitting down and resting it on my knee, or at the very least with the aid of a neck strap. 
But sheer size doesn't make the controller uncomfortable to use when I can do one of those things though, so it would be unfair to say that it completely fails this fundamental, hence why I'm giving it a half check and putting it over on the handy section. Now, this is where things go a little crazy. This next controller is not just twice the price of the TX16S, nor is it three times the price. No, this next controller is five and a half times the price, coming in at $1,100. Obviously, a controller of this price is not for the average enthusiast. Instead, this thing must be revolutionary or at the very least look expensive for bragging rights. Just before I show you this controller though, I want you to think to yourself if you were given the option to have this upcoming $1,100 controller or the $65 pocket radio for absolutely free, which one do you think you would pick? All right, enough speculation. This controller right here, this is the most expensive controller I could get my hands on. It's the Futaba T18SZ. Now, I'm not sure about you, but this controller doesn't really look all that flashy and is low-key a bit of a disappointment. In saying this though, it is a nine-year-old controller. Nine years old? How the heck is that even relevant today then, Brody? Well, it's all thanks to the fact that it's actually still being sold brand new by Futaba, so it's still a potential option to go for. But look, let's just run through our fundamentals list and see if this $1,100 controller can tick all the boxes. Although this doesn't look like an amazing controller because it's literally nearly a decade old, this absolutely ticks off the build quality fundamental. Everything still works surprisingly well and even with its dated looks, it still feels modern and really high quality. Next, it does technically fail fundamental too, as it uses potentiometer gimbals instead of hall effect, but if Futaba is known for one thing, it's their quality. And these gimbals really are no exception. They feel great, they're still holding up well after nine years, and will more than likely outlast most of the brand new cheap hall effect gimbals. So I'll give it a full check here as the sheer spike in quality does override the fact that they're behind on the technology. Then we get to move on to the modular protocol support side of things. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, but to explain it simply, there is no module bay on the back, so you're stuck using Futaba's specific protocol system, all of which happens to cost a lot as well. But in saying this, there is also the possibility to add on a crossfire transmitter specifically, but you will need to do some tinkering, and in comparison to module bay ready controllers, this kind of just sucks. So I'm going to give that one a half check. Unfortunately, it really doesn't hit the mark with Fundamental 4 either, being pretty much the exact same form factor as the TX16S. In fact, I think the TX16S might have actually been modeled off of this controller first. Anyways, that's all to say that it's still kind of, you know, meh in the hands and I'll give it, I'll give it another half check there. Then finally, just like every other controller so far, even the crappy light radio too. It's got both data and charging through USB-C. Wait, what's that? It doesn't even have a USB port at all? What? Yeah, you heard me right. Thanks to this controller's release only a year after USB-C was invented, it never got it. Not even as an update over the past nine years. Back in its day, this would have been the golden standard for radio controllers, and had Futaba updated its hardware and continued to provide high quality controllers with modern technology, they might very well still be worth buying today. Unfortunately, however, as you now know, this hasn't been the case, and it's perfect to show you just how picking the most expensive controller isn't always the best option. You would literally be better off with the pocket radio for over a thousand dollars less. So with all that laid out in front of us, it's pretty shocking to see the most expensive controller scored itself a three on the golden fundamental scale. And well, you know what that means. All right, now you might be thinking with these three Radio Master controllers happily taking up the handy side, which one should you actually invest in? When I was first getting into the hobby, I found the cheapest controller possible, which at the time was the Emacs Easy Pilot controller, and it was something like that. But I mean, hey, look, it cost $26. As to be expected though, this controller's gimbals failed on me pretty much immediately, so I upgraded to the lovely Beta FPV Light Radio 2 that we talked about earlier. We all know how that went, with two failed gimbals, which then prompted me to sink as much money as I had into a controller that wouldn't suck. At the time, my only real option was to jump all the way up to the TX16S, and to be honest with you, I really only have good things to say about it, considering the fact that it's lasted my rough lifestyle for the past couple of years. So, considering the fact that I've started at the cheapest end and worked my way all the way up to the most expensive end, these are gonna be my recommendations. If you have a super tight budget, pick up the pocket radio. It's gonna be the best bang for your buck, and you may honestly never need to upgrade from it, if, however, you just want the best of the best, it's between the TX16S 
and the Boxer. Even though right now I own the TX16S and that is my daily driver, if I was buying a new today, I would swing towards the Boxer thanks to its size and honestly, it just feels better than this one does. To add to that as well, if my budget allowed for it, I'd also have these upgraded AG01 gimbals installed too. Like that may seem a bit overkill for some, but for me, I think it's just like the ultimate combo. Now, even though you've got your controller sorted with a little bit of money to spare, it doesn't mean that you should go ahead and blow the rest of your budget on gear that you don't need. So in this next video here, I'll be showing you the FPV gear that has genuinely helped me improve as a pilot and how to get it all without breaking the bank. See you over there.